Patrick. Hello, I'm Patrick Adamson, Deputy Head Teacher at Calder Grange Grammar School. Hello, I'm Andy Proctor, I'm Acting Deputy Head Teacher at Calder Grange Grammar School. Today we're going to try and answer some of the questions that you've raised regarding joining our sixth form next year. We, we encourage students to, to take three A-levels apart from s certain circumstances where maybe a student has got a lot of eights and nines. It is, it is more appropriate for most students to do three A-levels and focus on the three, which is why we changed our policy a couple of years ago. Those students who do start four, um, very occasionally they may need to drop one of those, but it, 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 it's not usually the rule, they usually carry on with four. It is difficult to do an AS level as they're not taught separately anymore. They, so you might not have covered the work for an AS. And what we found is that people who, who were doing four and, and were going to drop one didn't do the work anyway for the AS. Uh, the EPQ can be picked up in year 13. We do do it in year 13. And that's what we advise most students do, certainly more academic students, to pick up the EPQ in year 13. Anything of this, Andy? No, I'll just say, just bear in mind that if you are thinking of four A-levels, your UCAS offers will be based upon four and not three. And the amount of curriculum time that it takes to do four A-levels is almost full-time 60 periods a fortnight. It's an awful lot of work, and it also is incredibly difficult to obviously achieve the offers in four subjects as opposed to three. Yeah, like all of our lessons in school, support is provided as required. Teachers are very skilled at helping students with weaknesses, offering extra resources and offering extra lessons as appropriate. But it's, it is imperative as, as a sixth form student that you speak first and that you raise issues with teachers as, as you encounter them, rather than trying to sweep problems under the carpet. Yeah, I, I would echo that. It's really about you taking responsibility for your learning and discussing issues with your teacher. They will set up support if necessary, but most of those problems can be resolved with that ongoing conversation between the teacher and the student. Yeah, our electronics course is no longer being run in the school years lower than our current year 11. So we will be honoring the obligation to teach A-level electronics next year, but this year will be the final entry to the A-level course. Yeah, all of our results are available. Uh, we will put them on the website um, in a prominent position um, and we'll be doing that shortly. We're very fortunate at Caldy Grange that our size of our timetable and our students were able to timetable most combinations of A-level subjects. It's very rare that we have to change people's options. It does happen occasionally, but very often they are in the, the very niche subjects and not necessarily the sciences, maths, etc. So most combinations we can cover, but we will speak with you if we think we can't, we can't timetable that for your first year in year 12. And we don't, we don't have fixed blocks to start with. I know some schools do that. We, we vary the blocks to try and um, address everyone's needs and, and wishes. So that, that's what Andy was trying to say at the end of it, I suppose. What we come back to is if there are issues we'll tell you but most of the time we eliminate those before we get to that point well we're we're looking at putting on extra sessions for year 11s later in the year to to cover um the a-level subject area the a-level options that students want to look at we will basically be starting some a-level topics with them um, some subjects such as history will do different different topics but obviously other, other areas such as maths and science, there'll be particular areas that you would need to do before going on to A-level. But um, the teachers at this school will look at the best way of addressing that and put that forward in those, in those, in those proposed programmes before summer. I'd also add as well is that it's normal every single year that students receive a transition pack of work to work through the summer. Uh, so we'll be continuing with those plans um, this year being no exception. So students will receive a pack of information that they must work through in preparation for the September start. Although the grades students receive will be the grades that, that the teacher is confident they would have achieved. So they're the grade, the, the, the entrance grades wouldn't change for those subjects. That's right, the entrance requirements are in our prospectus. Uh, we don't foresee them changing and so our 
our entrance will be based upon those grades in that prospectus. Yes, we will do. They are, they are the entrance requirements to the school and we will be keen on following those. You will receive some information regarding expressions of interest for four subjects, that's including a reserve. Uh, please follow the process. The process completes shortly after the Easter holidays with you submitting your expressions of interest. Those expressions of interest are not tying, but they enable us to start and build the timetable, as, pa as Patrick said, to try and work through awkward combinations of subjects to ensure that we can deliver them for you. Um, and you can actually change your subjects when you get your results, but it gives us a, a good starting point from which to start building the next year's timetable. All the grades are, are in the prospectus. Um, for each subject, there's, there's an overall one and there is individual ones for each grade. Um, so, obviously you'll know when you get your results on August the 12th. Um, and from that, you'll be able to decide, can you do your subjects that you chose back in April or whether some changes are needed. We can discuss changes with you on August the 12th when you get your results. And uh, then we'll enrol you on the courses from that date onwards and you'll start in year 12 in September. There's a lot of information within the prospectus and we will be running those taster sessions later in year 11. There's also the online evening where you can obtain quite a lot of information. There are videos from the subjects as well. And the online sessions will lead into, as Patrick says, taster sessions. At the moment, they may be remote taster sessions. We'll just have to see how COVID goes in, in turn. After Easter. I recommend taking three subjects as, as discussed earlier. Um, it is a very small number of students who would find it appropriate to do four and as Andy said earlier universities will ask you for three grades normally but if you do four they'll ask you for four and it won't be three A's and a B it'll be four A's. So as I said earlier you will receive information following the online evening. All the details will be in in there, follow the process, follow the application form, the expressions of interest form, hit the deadlines, and we'll be in touch with you in the near future about our future plans. That will vary depending on the subject. So some subjects do have more than 25 in. At the lower end, we, we do have a cutoff usually. Um, we do try and take into account the year and the people that have applied for it. So, um, we are quite open to class sizes, but obviously if the class size is too small, we do reserve the right not to run that subject. Well, I, I, I do, yes. Um, but again, a lot of that will come down to the, stu the, the, the actual student's response to, to how they've worked throughout the pandemic. Those students that have adapted well to home learning and taken responsibility for their own learning, will find A-levels easier probably than, than students in previous years because what we try and do at Caldy uh, is, is, is build resilience and independent skills in how, how you learn. You learn best on your own, but obviously when you're young, you're not very good at that. We try and, we try and build that in students throughout the school and as students improve on that, their learning improves. When you go to university, um, they'll find that, it, that it's very much different to how, they, how it was when they first started school in year seven. So students are ready, but again, you know, that, that will be, it will be down to individuals and how they've reacted, but we'll support all students and, to, and try and help them adapt to sixth form life. As we said earlier, we do have plans, formative plans at the moment to try and address some of the topics that have been missed off following the May half term. And in combination also with the transition resources that we always set the students, we try and bridge the gap between GCSE and A-level. That's always there. There's always a gap between those two. And as Patrick says as well, we will support students. But key to that is students making effective choices joining year 12. Make sound choices um, based upon proper research about future careers. And then also choose subjects that you enjoy as well. Yeah, and, and certainly in the, in the time between now and then to engage in the opportunities that school offers in those subjects. Yes, we do. There are, yes, there are. We have um, a, a Russian teacher who is Russian. Um, French teacher who is French. A Chinese teacher who is Chinese. Yes. 
So yes, there are native speakers and we always have an influx of classroom assistants from China and from the different countries as well who support learning in the classroom. But all our language teachers are, you know, um, very well qualified and very proficient in their role, wherever they're from. Okay, thank you for joining us today and look forward to seeing you again soon.